Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. It's Azure Friday. I'm here with Jaime Espinosa, and we're talking about web jobs. We're going to make our first web job, uh, but you have decided to make a console application. Is that right for making a web That's job? That's right. It's uh, really it's just anything that will run on a websites platform. Okay. Which is JS console, you, lots of different things. Uh, not a DLL uh, it, though, right? What's that? Can I just make a DLL? Why not? Uh, so anything yeah, at all. You can do anything you want. I mean, obviously, it, it runs kind of like you need an executable to to call this DLL. Well, but I need an I need an entry point, right? You need an need. entry point. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So web jobs are not necessarily me uh, calling this executable as much as it is some managed system calling an entry point. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be calling main or are we going to be calling a function? We're going to be calling main. Okay. It's just running a program. It, the mental model to use for the back end on this that, mm -hmm. that I find helpful is basically how an operating system handles the different programs that you install on it. Okay. Some programs maybe run as services and there is a background thing for it. There's usually a, a helper that helps you cron uh, or, or schedule jobs or, right. or, or tasks, right? And you, you have the user trigger task that will run. Mm -hmm. You also have your task manager that allows you to to, to sift through that. And uh, just like uh, that analogy, you can run any executable that you want. Okay. So I can run Node, I can run batch files, mm -hmm. bash yeah. scripts, things like that. Uh, PowerShell, I guess, yeah. in the future. PowerShell, there's, there is a, there is a, a hacky way of doing that right now. But yeah, it, it's in the very near future, we're going to put it in as as uh, uh, as what do you call it? It's a natural extension to right. It'll be built in. Built in. Thank you. Okay. So this is a, a command line app here. Right. Uh, which I just hit. There we go. Okay. So I want. And this to is very sophisticated. This calls console dot right line basically. And that's then, all it does. Now under references, you haven't referenced anything web job specific. No, this absolutely app not. Doesn't been. know about web jobs. This is as vanilla as it gets. Okay. <laughs> you can. Just to demonstrate that uh, you can really I, run I'm anything you want. I'm just asking. That's my job. Um, so how do I get it up onto the web? Well, I'm actually going to uh, to use the bug here, okay? And that will allow me to um, to use a remote debugger later on. Okay. And I will just build a solution. All right. I'll go to where this solution ended up at. Uh, have it over here. And here's an important bit, and it's gotten me a bunch of times. I know it's getting people. Uh, the executable, uh, this executable needs to exist uh, at the root of the zip file. Okay. Okay. So uh, don't make zip files with folders. Now we got to back up a second. You said of the zip file. My first question, of course, is what zip file? What zip file? Okay. <laughs> uh, so we're going to zip this up. Okay. And this is just one of the many ways to. To send a web job up to this. This is right. This is uh, the way to to deploy a web job using the portal. Okay. okay. So you zip and it up. You zip it up, and what that allows you is to have DLLs or anything else that you need to. Right, and then you were you were sure, of course. I noticed not just to grab the executable, but the config and the PDB for yeah. debugging purposes. That's right. That's right. Uh, so what we can do now is go back to our console here, say add web job, and I give it some name, back to Okay, you'll have and to slow down a little one. bit there. So you're selecting the zip, uh, the recently created zip file there that's got all that in there. Okay. That's right. And we're just using zip in this case as a transport mechanism. Presumably, you're going to unzip it when it's up there. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. It's just a way to deploy, but uh, you can use anything that we currently support in, in the websites. That is, you know, uh, web deploy, Git. Uh, it's actually a great, uh, a great way to deploy to this platform because you're able to uh, develop and deploy immediately. See how it works on the uh, on the platform. Excellent. We'll need to do a video on Git deployment specifically. Yep. And we say what running mode we want to. Have Let's say here. run on demand. Let's run on demand. Okay, so okay. we're uploading the job. Presumably something magic's happening on the server and you are un you've unzipped it and it's sitting in a folder somewhere. It's sitting in a folder somewhere. That's exactly right. So now it's in demo and we can hit run once and okay. it'll run this job once. Okay. 
uh, and once it's ran, it'll have the statistics of when I ran it, okay. and what was the output of that run. Was it okay. success, successful or, or failure? Now the logs, if you click on the logs, we should be able to see uh, an ID of this particular run for this particular um, job, okay? The status of that, when it started, when it ended, it'll give you some, some statistics of duration mm -hmm. and a link to download the file. Once you download this file, you can, you can open that up and uh, you will see that your... Let's uh, zoom in on that. Can you control scroll in GVM? Um, no, you can't. How about Windows and the plus key? There you go. Okay. So these are from Web Jobs itself. That's saying right. that you're about to run this script triggered in this way. Mm -hmm. And then this was you. This was the console.write line. So that was That's actually, right. so you wrote out to some console that we couldn't see. Exactly. That was captured yep. and in the log. That's right. And, and you see all, uh, for debugging information, you see that this is the instance, uh, or rather the VM that service or running this job. Hmm. Okay, so if you had a job that's running multiple uh, VMs, you will see this change. I see. So this identifier lets me know that I'm on a different machine. Exactly, exactly. And this is just info as to what happened when running the job mm -hmm. is uh, management. Okay. And one in one interesting side effect of knowing where you're running that the jobs themselves know where they're running or is accessible. Uh, using the environment variables. So you know where you're running you, you, or what VM you're in and you know what the other VMs around you. So mm -hmm. there is uh, some useful cases for that information. So uh, that is the on-demand. I do want to show you though the scheduled, okay? Because that's a slightly different experience. We're just going to go ahead and do the same job and we're going to put it on a schedule. When you select that, if you uh, have a scheduler if, uh, trial version or have an account with them, it'll it'll show another um, another page to this wizard. You're talking uh, about the Azure scheduler, Azure scheduler, which is a service within Azure that will then call us, presumably with HTTP, exactly, and tell us to do stuff. Exactly. Okay. And what's happening here is that we basically uh, import it their experience into web jobs so we can access it directly. Okay. And that way you have a single location from which to, to, to uh, create these kind of jobs. So the scheduler regions are actually slightly different than the regions that we have for the websites and this allows you to manage what region you want to put your jobs in, or your uh, schedules on. Presumably you put it you know, nearby, reasonably nearby, All right. if possible. If possible. Uh, they're just HTTP requests with an invocation, with the right code. So it's just a, a quick uh, REST API call there. Right, and I was also told by the gentleman at Scheduler that we don't pay for the bandwidth. He eats that. <laughs> he says he eats that bandwidth. Because yeah. we think about yeah. these things when we're in the cloud. Yeah. And what's going on here? You thinking? Oh, there we go. It's thinking. I changed the region. Uh, that was probably not the best thing to do at a demo. Uh, and you have two ways in which you can schedule this. I don't know if you uh, talked with yep, uh, we saw Kevin when on you this. Go, when you hit recurring, you get all these rich options about when you can make it recur. Exactly. So yep. there's uh, tons of options there. And uh, you can actually match these options to your auto scale options. And that's probably a whole different video <laughs> altogether. Okay, well, we'll do that. Um, but, um, but yeah, here we'll just have it every couple of minutes and starting right now. Okay. And Okay, so this is going to go and run the job on a schedule every every two minutes. Every two and minutes. then we'll get a, a, presumably a whole series of logs as it runs oh. and runs and runs. I hit the wrong button there. Well, you can start that one instead, I guess. Okay. Uh, and you can also run schedule jobs on demand. Oops, mm -hmm. that was... So you can you can click on, on it yourself, or you can have it uh, as a schedule. And I must have done. I think you picked the wrong guy. I think I picked the wrong guy. Can you, and you can click on this schedule. Here's one that's scheduled. You can click on that and see the schedule. This this actually throws you into the Azure Scheduler um, portal view. Oh, I see. So, so this is another example of two 
uh, services within Azure working together. Exactly. Uh, you, you guys want to be called in a schedule. There's no reason for you to write that. No. So you use the core Azure scheduler service. Exactly. exactly. They have a really strong service. There's no reason not to use that or reinvent that wheel. And you can you can manage it from there. You so it seems like at, at the at the basic. Uh, if I have a, uh, a, a website that I'm running internally at my company right now, mm -hmm. and maybe some console apps or some Windows services that are running, uh, there's going to be really, it's going to be extremely easy for me to move those up into web jobs. I know that some people have websites with components like that, mm -hmm. and they've been running them on virtual machines. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really like virtual machines because they require a lot of care and feeding. Right. right That's yeah. why I, I personally prefer websites. Yeah. And now web jobs would allow people to move those jobs, those workloads from virtual machines because they require helper services right. all over into a website plus web job. That's right. That's right. Some jobs are, are, can do that transition very easily mm -hmm. or some kind of tasks can do that transition easily. Um, like you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. if you have a very heavy, heavy loaded or resource hungry task, maybe not the best place to, to have that resource contagion with your own website because uh, your visitors may, may see some slowness mm -hmm. uh, on your site. But yeah, other than that, everything should port directly and very easily. Very cool. We're digging into web jobs here on Azure Friday.